A lot of companies have recently jumped on the bandwagon of analog rapid trigger keyboards. The problem with most of them, they're mediocre. It's not the case, however, with this keyboard I have here, the Oasis 75 by Backspace. Today I'll show you what's inside of the box, what's the performance and accuracy of the keyboard, how it sounds and finally whether it's worth your money and attention. Spoiler alert! It is. So let's do a quick unboxing and inside you will find the keyboard. The version I have here is the basic version with black jade switches from Galeron, which are analog switches. We'll get back to the switch in just a moment. Apart from the keyboard, you also get a coiled USB-C cable, combo keycap key switch puller, a set of additional keycaps including Windows and Mac options, as well as some accent keys and spare key switches, which can be used in case any of the original ones get broken in the future. Overall, build quality of the keyboard is really good. It has aluminum upper cover, which comes in a variety of different color options. There's aluminum alloy plate, latex foam for better sound experience, aluminum mid-frame PCB with RGB light, silicon pillars, PET film, aluminum lower cover, stainless steel counterweight block, aluminum feet and silicon pads, which hold the keyboard firmly in place. As you can see, there is a lot of metal elements used in the keyboard, which adds up to the weight. It's one of the heavier keyboards I've tested, weighing at around 1.69 kilograms. The keyboard has RGB backlight with plenty different lighting effects. The keys, however, aren't see-through. Talking about the keys, I like the choice Backspace did for the Legends. They're not your usual simple style. We have some dotted digital style font for the letters and numbers, classic style for the function keys like F1 and so on, and colorful font for the function and arrow keys. I think it looks great. The Legends are easily read and add to the overall aesthetic of the keyboard. Another thing that's a step away from the classic keyboard look is the frame. It's a sandwich style look with the top and bottom portion protruding slightly outwards and the middle part hugged between them. The feet are also not your typical plastic feet, which you can use to set the preferred angle. Here you have a rather large heavy duty metal feet with silicone pads with no ability to change the angle. That was an issue for me as the keyboard is set the way I like it, but I still believe it's worth mentioning. Overall, I have no remarks when it comes to build quality of the keyboard. It feels solid and sturdy and should last you for a long time. Now let's check what the keyboard sounds like. I don't know about you, but I have to say it sounds really nice, especially when you compare it to most of big brands rapid trigger keyboards, which sound horrible. I would go as far to say that it sounds better than Wooting and comparable, if not better than Polar 65 by Arbiter Studios, which has been the best sounding rapid trigger keyboard I've tested. Before we move forward, for those of you that are unaware or new to the whole idea of analog switches, Here's a quick explanation. Classic mechanical switches have a set actuation point, which the switch has to cross when it goes up or down. When going down, this is when the key activates, and when going up, that's the point when it deactivates. With analog switch, this can be set anywhere within the movement range of the switch and can be changed anytime you want. This is used by implementing Hall effect onto the switch and keyboard. The voltage changes based on the travel distance and upon reaching a specific value reads as an activation. Since the analog keyboards always know how much the key has been pressed, this has been used to create the rapid trigger effect. This basically means that after activation you only need to release the switch a fraction of a millimeter in order for it to become inactive and ready to be active again. So instead, like with classic mechanical switches where you need to wait for the switch to cross the activation line to use it again, here it basically happens instantly and gives you instant reaction and response times, which can be very beneficial in FPS games like CSGO, Valorant, Fortnite, Apex Legends or even Modern Warfare. The keys used in Oasis 75 are gathered on black jade switches, which are rather light analog switches with around 35 grams of actuation force, 50 grams bottom out force. They are linear with approximately 3.5 mm travel distance. They are really light and a pleasure to type with even for longer sessions. I also think they feel much smoother than most other rapid trigger keyboards I've tested and I really like them. There's one thing I need to note, however, since the keys are rather light and can be pressed easily, I'd recommend setting a higher activation value 
than what you normally would use. I used the keyboard with the actuation level set to 1mm, but it has proved to be too fast and I had to dial it down to 1.5mm. Like I said, the keys are light to press, so it's easy to press them by accident, and if you pair that with a fast actuation level, then you'll get a lot of typos. Time to move on to performance and precision values. On paper, the keyboard offers one of the fastest response times with polling rate of 8000Hz, meaning each key is read once every 0.125 of a millisecond. And if you combine it with one of the fastest rapid trigger settings you can get at 0.04 millimeter this should give us one of the fastest analog rapid trigger keyboards out there but of course we need to take into account drivers firmware and so on to measure the real life values here's what i did in order to test the real delay of the keyboard i've set up a high speed camera the sony rx100 mark 7 which can record at 1000 fps the footage is then slow 20 times giving us 50 fps when playing back the video the camera records the moment i release a control button which is a to hold scope in animation in Apex Legends. After I see the button start traveling up, I count the number of frames between the time it takes for the unscoping animation to happen. Since at 1000 FPS each frame is 1 millisecond, it's easy to see what's the latency between the registered release signal and effects taking place on screen. Of course, it's worth noting that this method takes into account latency of your whole system, CPU and monitor included. As for the Oasis 75, I have to say that the results are extremely good. It almost matches the Wooting when it comes to latency, averaging at 28 milliseconds with max values at 30 milliseconds and minimum values at 23. This basically means that this keyboard is just as fast as Wooting. With 2 millisecond difference, we're talking about margin error. Very impressive feat by Backspace. Just to confirm this impressive feature, I redid the tests using different game, Overwatch 2, but the same method with unscoping. And the results here were even closer. After 10 tests, the difference between the two keyboards was at 0.3 millisecond, meaning we finally have a keyboard that can match Wooting in terms of performance. For the precision tests, I have used an electronic micrometer, a device normally used for measuring thickness or size of a small object down to thousands of a millimeter. I placed it over the switch and used it to move the stem of the switch up and down in a very controlled manner to see if the settings done in the app are correct. And initially I encountered an issue where the settings I did in the app didn't transfer to the keyboard, but it turned out it was a problem with a specific USB port. So if you get something similar, just change the USB port and it should help. I've tested this for three settings. First, 1.5 mm travel and 0.12 mm rapid trigger. Second, 0.5 mm travel and 0.08 mm rapid trigger. And finally, 0.12 mm travel and 0.04 rapid trigger. The last setting is purely for testing purposes. I would not recommend using it for gaming as it's too sensitive. All three settings were pretty precise with a small margin error. The activation distance behaves as expected and same for rapid trigger sensitivity. Even for lower settings, it's pretty precise and I think the filtering function does a really good job as there was hardly any weird behavior. But like I said, I would not recommend using it on any rapid trigger keyboard, it's just too sensitive and prone to accidental input. When it comes to the app, it's pretty good, maybe a bit too close to the big brands in terms of advertisements, but it gets the job done. There you can change the RGB settings, remap keys, record macros, and also what's most important, change the rapid trigger settings for each key individually, and store those settings under three profiles, which are accessed using the physical switch at the back. Some of the other features worth mentioning are physical profile switch at the back of the keyboard which lets you easily switch between different profiles stored on the keyboard's memory. There's also a dedicated Mac Windows switch which changes the layout of the keys. Overall I am very impressed by this keyboard, not only does it sound really nice, but also delivers exceptional performance and very high customizability. Overall I can really recommend it as a 10 keyless rapid trigger keyboard. And for me, it has replaced the Wooting, mainly due to the better sound profile out of the box, as well as a more practical form factor.